So, just the basics so we're all on the same page. Because it seems like in this game, a lot of people have different uh, definitions of what tanking is, or different ideas of what tanking is, or different ideas of sets. Uh, actually, I'm going to probably put this image in the Discord as well, just so for your reference in the student forum channel. So if you look at that image in the student forum channel, um, that's that's pretty much this game's tanking population. Uh, so at the very bottom, and obviously the largest, it's uh, most people have this idea of tanks are only meant to hold aggro and not die. Short, that's the fundamentals, but uh, I think regardless of what platform or server you're from, we have all have those horror stories of tanks really not doing much except you know, uh, letting people die and maybe holding aggro sometimes. That's that's most of the player population. Uh, what 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 I, what I want to teach you guys, I want to bring you guys up to about here. Uh, aggro, don't die, sets, buffs, and debuff. I'll explain these tiers real quick. So most people sort of move on from this fundamental thing of just hold aggro and don't die. It's really simple. Anyone can do it. Any monkey can do it. Uh, the next step usually is not really intended by a lot of people. They tend to bring sets usually for their own benefit, like seducers, or maybe they'll bring Evan because they think uh, they need more health. But then, inconse consequentially, that ends up helping the group. Uh, we're going to go beyond that, and then we're going to go on to aggro, don't die, bring the sets you intend to, in intend to bring for your group, and you want to buff and debuff. A lot of tanks in this game, for some reason, don't think that's what tanks should be doing. I don't know why. I don't know why so many people are against this idea that tanks should also buff the group and debuff targets. That's uh, this is where a lot of people sort of just go away from. I don't know why. The next stage would be you aggro, you don't die, you bring the sets, you buff and debuff, and you focus on maximizing your uptimes for those debuffs and buffs. And the last tiers do everything pretty much. <laughs> um, so these do everything, and then the tier below that, that's where I want you guys to end up at. Um, and note that these boundaries aren't solid. It's very permeable. So for an example, let's say we're going for a no death run. I'm shitting my pants. I'm pretty scared. So if I'm usually at the aggro don't die stage right here, I usually fall down to the very bottom, hold aggro and don't die, because I'm just so focused on surviving for this no death run or no death title uh, that I fall down to here. But so it's very it's very permeable. Uh, but yeah, that's the goal for, for this course that you know you guys um, eventually do everything a tank's supposed to do in this game. You buff, debuff, you maximize your uptimes, and eventually you'll move on on your own as well to do everything. And by everything I mean you can, you know, DPS, off DPS, uh, you can adjust your builds or adjust how you play to any type of group, whether it's a progression group or or a group that uh, pushes score. So that's that's the aim of that's my aim. That's my goal. Hopefully we get there. Uh, the next the next image I'll also snip into the Discord as well. Uh, again, it's nothing nothing not a big deal. Uh, people. Again, they come from a lot of people come from other games like Final Fantasy or World of Warcraft and or even like older MMOs and they have this in their head the idea of this holy trinity that each role is separate, completely separate from one another. In ESO it's pretty unique that these roles actually do overlap quite a bit. Tanks especially, tanks uh, in ESO can often replace the healer, not in terms of healing output, but in terms of the buffs and stuff like that. Uh, tanks can also DPS in trials, especially if you have an off tank and you know your group is comfortable with the mechanics, then your tank can DPS. Your tanks can DPS. So the tank role is really, really fluid, um, and vice versa. That's just the main point. So get the concept of this rigid rig rigidness of uh, roles away from from your mind. And for today, I want to go over the basic checklist of tanks, and this is an update for Dragonhold. So, uh, if you're not bored by now, let's go over the <laughs> checklist. So we're gonna have, we're gonna go over race, class, gear, Mundus, food, and champion points, and other interesting stuff. So if you have any questions along the way, um, if you're in the Discord, just 
feel free to ask me any like you, you know what I mean. Just uh, chime in with any question. Speaking of questions, does anyone have any question so far about, about what we're talking about? Or what you want to do? Okay, no questions. <laughs> not <yet. laughs> okay, not yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. So the right next. So okay. So the next one. Uh, best races. So I'm sure you guys heard this before as well. That you can tank on any race. Um, a lot of people really repeat this to the point that it's fact, and it, 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 it's true to an extent. Um, and this was especially proven to be mostly correct theory by this this dude uh, Wohler. He's from PCU. He tanked on the Khajiit, and this was back when racial passes weren't really as important as today. You could be an Argonian DPS back then, and not really lose out. But, uh, you know, people see p players like Wohler and they're like, oh, well, I can tank on my uh, Wood Elf or whatever. You can. Um, and if you're good, if you're a good enough player, you can pretty much tank on any spec, any race or whatever. Um, but just to, like, make it easier for you guys, if I had to break down which races were um, the best in terms of handling, in terms of... Uh, making things easier for players no matter what experience or level it probably goes something like uh this it's gonna be imperial nord orc argonian and then breton and others so these races in my opinion are like the most suited for tanking i wouldn't say the best because that does play into the idea of you can't tank on anything else besides these races but imperial nord orc and argonian um, are primarily the tank races for ESO. Now, that doesn't mean you have to race change your Wood Elf or Dark Elf um, to these races. It's just a matter of, uh, let's say you're a new player and you're trying to tank. Uh, you might probably want to want more health, just, just in case, but you don't know um, the mechanics. You're not sure exactly what your healer is like, so you might, more, you want, you might want more health like an Imperial stuff like that or if you want to try to get into off dpsing and tanking at the same time as an off tank an orc is a great choice so certain races have certain benefits for what you want to do obviously for a certain for like whatever tank build you want to play you can have certain races but obviously you're not going to race change your character every time and i don't know of anyone that has like 12 tanks <laughs> uh, for you know like for each class and for each race so it's really up to you if you want to pick any of these races or do your own thing doesn't really matter uh just think of it as trying to play to your trying to play to your strengths no matter what build you use okay so the next thing uh classes this is a huge thing for dragonhold because a lot of people have been asking me well what are the best classes and uh it's a lot of people think dragon knight tanking is dead because of the engulfing flames change it's not in terms of sustain and handling especially in terms of ad control dragonite is still the best tank this patch probably moving forward is still probably gonna be the best tank for pve four man content and trial content now where it might not be the best in terms of rate composition maybe maybe not this patch but it's still gonna be in terms of just purely tanking dragonite and then we have the nightblade nightblade has gotten uh, quite a few buffs recently and also the fact that it does offer minor savagery for raid compositions. Uh, yeah, Nightblade tank is definitely strong. And then we have ne Necromancer and Warden tanks. These are sort of on the same level. Some people will probably put them on the same level as Nightblades. Personally, I put them below Nightblades because they tend to not be used as often. Because you have a Warden healer. And you have you know Stamina Necromancer DPS or Magic Necromancer DPS. Negating the fact that you may need another Necromancer. But that's really up to you. And then the rest is kind of weird. Uh, Sorcerer and Templar. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this. Because a lot of people do have Sor Sorcerer and Templar tanks. But uh, after tanking all these classes, I think this is probably the most accurate ranking. So if you're getting ready to tank for the first time ever, I would definitely suggest Dragon Knight. It's very, very easy. Um, it, that's not a bad thing either. It's not like it's... No bad thing either, uh, especially for four man content. Uh, a lot of tanks actually don't seem to move on from four man content to twelve man content. They just sort of stay in pledges or arenas. 
So Dragon Knight, I would still take to Dragon Star Arena, Black Rear's Prison, the hardest DLC dungeons, whatever. So that's classes. Uh, awesome. Do you guys have any questions so far about classes or races? Well, I'm going to change my Orc Nightblade to a tank. Nice. That's what you want. And you can, you know, you know with your Orc Nightblade um, tank, you can also off DPS. So there's a lot of... A lot of new players think you have to just tank. Uh, you can set up your tank in such a way that in a lot of trials, like Ethereum Archive, where you don't need a second tank for most of the trial, uh, even Halls of Fabrication, like bo uh, Boss 2, Boss 3, you can DPS. You don't have to be a pure tank. So it's pretty fun to swap your specs in and out as a tank and a DPS. Uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, let me know if you, yeah, let me know if you need help with that as well. Uh, you had something to say, Malicious? Sorry, I just have a quick question. With do the races and class, so if you pick like a DK, does that have any bearing on what how the races would fall for it, or does any of the races kind of even for each of the classes? Um, some would say it has a bearing. So let's say you have a Nord Dragon Knight, so that would play more into you know gaining ultimate uh, more often. So you could. Think of it like that, so if you want more ultimate, and Dragon Knights also do ult, uh, generate ultimate quite fast, uh, you can do a Nord DK. Otherwise, no, race usually does not have a huge bearing on the classes. But like uh, like uh, Hand of the God said, she says she's going to change her Orc Nightblade into an Orc Tank. So she has this benefit of you know being a race that's suitable for DPS, and she can also tank on it. Does that make sense? No, that does make sense. Okay. I, I mean, my DK is an Argonian because I was, it's, I've had him for a few patches and it was kind of the idea to use the Argonian back then for the potion passive, but I wasn't sure if, you know, it made more sense for a DK to be like an Imperial or if you were going to run a, ward, a, a Warden and then you would want a Nord. I was just kind of curious. Yeah, it just generally doesn't matter. Um, at that point, it's about what you want um, more than what you need. And okay. just, just an example, like I used to be a Nord Dragon Knight tank. Um, before I discovered the Imperial Master Race, uh, and I was score pushing Dragon Star Arena, and th there were some things I noticed that were off. Like um, back then, this was when we were still we were starting to use Balance, which was killing our health and gaining more magic rate. So mm -hmm. I, I felt like I needed more health, and I and I tried everything. Um, first, I, I did uh, certain foods, I did certain build, or more, more health enchants, but I still wasn't satisfied, and it felt like I was holding my group back in the score push. So I race changed to Imperial, and it felt a lot better. So it's really okay. about what you want rather than what you need. Awesome. <clears throat> All right, and then there's no more. Which race has the big? Uh, <laughs> and then uh, let's see. All right, so gear as of Dragonhold. Um, so the highlighted, I'll just snip this as well, because I should have thought this through. <laughs> uh, let's see. Alright, I put that in Discord as well. Um, so gear, the highlighted item sets are the most used as of Dragonhold right now. Um, as you can see, there is quite a list. You have Ebon. Hercene's Veneer, Worm Cult, Dragon's Defilement, Morak Tong, Yonokrin, blah blah. This seems very overwhelming, especially for people starting out tanking. You don't need all of this right away. I would say the priority sets you need to get is Ebon and Alkash, then Yonokrin. Everything else you see here is really specific to your group. So if you're in a progression group, uh, you're gonna need the Ebon and Alkash. If you are in a really good group getting world records or whatever, uh, and they need you know you to fulfill certain buffs like her scenes or whatever, then that's that's where these sets come in. Um, some sets are of course situational, uh, regardless of what the group experiences. So like Plague Doctor, if you are in an off tank DPS spec, uh, Hand of the Gods, like on boss four in V Hoth. You're gonna be squishier because you have less health because you're specking more for DPS, right? So you might wear a set like Plague Doctor to supplement your health. Um, so most of these sets that are not highlighted are pretty situational to your group and specific to your group. So don't be. So, yeah. So you wouldn't wear Ebon as an off tank. 
Um, for which part? So it's, this is where it gets a little complicated. <laughs> yeah, so this is the problem that I have. I don't know what sets to wear with certain, you know. Well, it, it, like I said, it would depend on your group and also what content as well. So it's a bit, it's a bit complicated. But uh, let, give me, give me an example, and I'll help you out. Like, uh, what trial, what fight, or just trial in general? Uh, okay, so let's uh, vet um, SS. So sense. Okay. Um. Yeah, you'd, you'd probably want uh, one tank to wear heaven, especially for a progression group. Um, you could potentially have... Let's say, which tank are you? Are you the one tanking the dragon or the one tanking the adds? On the uh, boss fights. Well, first of all, I've never tanked it. <laughs> okay, so okay. I could probably start as off tank or I don't know. Okay, so for trash... Uh, it's probably beneficial to have one tank, regardless of whether you're the tank or not, to wear Ebon, because people are pretty stupid and stand in red, and it's just better to be safer, right? For boss fights, if you are, uh, let's say, the main tank, um, and you have a stamina DPS composition, you are in a position where you can proc more Octong, so you could be wearing more Octong and Yonacrin together. And then, if you're the off tank, you can provide other buff sets like Ebon and Hersing. So that, so it really de depends. I guess I keep adding more and more layers to the to this, but it depends on your group, your comp uh, your, your content you're doing, and the composition. So <laughs> it's yeah, there's no, there's probably, no easy answer. Um, yeah, that's probably it, better for another chat. Well, I mean, we can talk about it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 really specific to the situation and uh, your group. So don't worry too much about getting all this sets. Like I said, it's just really yeah, really it's, specific. It's what I find interesting because my main um, tune is a healer. You have Worm here and Olareme. Yes. Healer stuff. Right. Remember when we talked about the uh, so-called Trinity, the Holy Trinity of roles? Tanks do quite uh, overstep into the territory of healers. <laughs> Not in terms of healing yeah, output, yeah. but in terms of the buffs uh -huh. they can give. And this is because in the context of trials, healers do wear other sets um, that will buff the group DPS, like Martial Knowledge, Zen. So obviously you don't, as, a, as two healers, you, you may not have room for certain buff sets like Worm. So this is, or rehearsing, this is where uh, the, the tank um, comes in. So you have essentially a tank, you can think of a tank as a uh, spare spare slot, spare item slot or, or two. Uh, the Ola Rime, this is specific more for uh, four man content. So if you don't have a healer with Ola Rime, uh, you do you you wear Ola Rime as a tank. And this can proc through a lot of abilities, including Wall, which you would naturally use as a tank anyway. So, for example, I've used Ola Rime in Black Roots Prison and Dragon Star Arena, uh, regardless of whether we ran a healer or not. It's just, it's just a nice way of providing the group. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So again, all situational, depending on the content and your group. That's pretty much it. Uh, I you said that you don't like, um, of course, Templar tanks, but I do have one, and I run Battalion Defender. That's fine. I mean, like I said, Templar tanks are fine, um, but in the, in terms of you know like management, like resource management and uh, utility, it's what I meant earlier was like you know for any player of any experience, Dragon Knights the easiest to handle or uh, most appropriate. Uh, Sorcerer and Templar, they're kind of they're, they're, like, people can tank fine on them for most content. It's just a bit more work, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it does. And I never take her into 12-man trials. I just do four-man on her. I mean, you can. <laughs> you could. I mean, it's all, it, it all depends. No, I want my DK. <laughs> okay, you want your DK. <laughs> all right, so let's see. Uh, but yeah, the highlighted item sets you definitely want first, rather than everything all at once. It's just way too much. 
uh, way too overwhelming. So I do suggest getting Evan and Alkosh first, and then Yonokrin, and then everything after. Everything after is just going to be really dependent on your group and the content you're doing and the composition of the group. So that's just a discussion for another day. Uh, monster sets. This is a list of monster sets you can get. Uh, these are pretty, most of them are pretty easy to get, like Bloodspawn, uh, Engine Guardian, Lord Warden, uh, Swarm Mother. And of course, the monster sets you'll use are also dependent on your group or your tanking playstyle or your build. But uh, in general, these sets you do want to have at hand uh, for any situation if it comes up. Um, and if th this last part, DPS. That's, again, for what you want to do. Uh, Hand of the Gods, like, off-tank DPS. You could, you have to wear, like, DPS sets, obviously, to do that. Like, Reliquin, Lachistes, and then a two-piece monster DPS set, whether it's Selene's or Veladreth. So that's just a minor note. All right, and trait... Oh, it's what? overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, but that's fine. It's I'm, I'm here to help you through it. Uh, but just keep a note. Evan Alkosh first. Monster sets, whatever. I mean, these are just like... I mean, it's not whatever, but it's like... You can just slowly work on getting these. Um, if I had to prioritize the monster sets you'd want, it it would probably be Bloodspawn, Lord Warden, and if you're Nightblade tank, uh, specifically as we discussed, Stonekeeper is really good. Um, and a lot of people will probably make fun of me for this, but Engine Guardian is also actually a decent uh, set if you want to play a bit selfish. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's, and then you can sort of just work on the rest. But Bloodspawn, Lord Warden, Stonekeeper for you for sure. Uh, do you have any questions, Malicious? No, I'm 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 pretty good. I'm just taking notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So as of Dragonhold, the traits for your tank is uh, I say two hander, which is you could do a bow, but it's usually a lightning staff to help. Uh, keep up minor vulnerability, which is good for the group. DPS and off balance on targets. So it's usually going to be a lightning stuff. Yeah, um, tanks in the past have used things like two handers or bows, but it's usually a lightning stuff. You can do a ice like ice staff as well, um, but that's again specific to the situation. Uh, the two hander trait will be infused, and you want to put a crusher enchantment on this infused. Uh, weapon because this does I mean you want the most out of crusher and you, you guys know what a crusher enchantment is right it's like armor debuff yeah. yeah and that provides you know penetration for your group so that's great one-hander weapon the trait so this is a little up for grabs um, there was a change a while ago that halved the uh, value of the enchantments on one-hander weapons so most tanks nowadays, they run decisive on their front bar, like one-hander uh, one weapon, or powered, or they just put a poison on it, which negates the uh, enchantment. But again, like it, it's really the, it's preference at this point. If you want to go with inf uh, poisons or decisive or power or whatever, since infuse infuse is very um, not useful. For the group, because again, tanking is all about the group. Uh, you can obviously do a little build of your own, like hardening enchantment with infused on the, on the sword and board bar. But again, that's up to you. But generally, trait wise, the most important thing to take away from here is infused crusher on the two-handed weapon, weapon. On the body, so I like to say this is a matter of what you need first, and then what you want. Uh, if you need more health. Um, you can do an in, like an infused body piece, primarily the chest, legs, or head, since those gives the full uh, the maximum value for infused trait. And then a matter of want. So an example, a really good example of this is a lot of tanks go three infused on the head, chest, and legs, and then four sturdy on the small pieces, the rest of the pieces. Um, that's generally what most tanks need. But then, when you get into the realm of want, like you, you're comfortable with the fight, you you think you'll be fine without the sturdy and the infused, you can play around with the traits a little bit. So, 
for example, in VAS Hard Moon, I, if I'm main tanking, I don't do three infused and four sturdy. I do like three infused, four divines, or all divines. Because I'm very comfortable with the fight. I'm not permanently blocking ohms. I'm not running out of stamina. And I do fun, fun little stuff like uh, Lord Mundus or something. More health, why not? So that's an example. Any questions so far? And yes, so the, uh, sorry, go on. On the um, body pieces, when yeah, you do the yeah. infused like for more health, is this um, is it all, like all tri stat glyphs, or would you do you use a mix? Uh, you can do what, like I said, what you need, basically. So if you think you need uh, a bit of both max stamina and max magic stats along with health, then yes, tri stat glyphs. Uh, you don't have to do tri stat glyphs, but it's again what like you want to get your stats to where you're comfortable with that's what i mean by what you need okay. and, and then from there you can sort of just branch out and experiment um but yeah no need to go out and buy prismatic lifts immediately because i know a lot of things that did it and they're like i didn't really need to do that so it was a wa it was a waste of gold <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you yeah. for saying that because I saw, you know, most of them were saying try stats, and I was like, "Geez, I don't have enough to do." Yeah. No. 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 Um, it's again what you need, and then what you want. <laughs> the people saying that usually are saying what they want. <laughs> I, got I have a quick question for you. Sure. Um, okay. I'm curious about, um, and maybe you'll get to this later. But is there any enchantments that help with uh, resistances? So your spell resist and your physical resist? Because that seems to be right now where I'm having my biggest problem gear-wise. Uh, hitting cap without having to spend an inordinate amount of CP. Okay, so enchantment-wise, I'll, I'll actually get to resistances later, but enchantment-wise, there is no enchantment that boosts your uh, resistances, unfortunately. Or and rather, fortunately. I didn't think so. I just wanted to bear. I, I just wanted to make sure because I've been through a bunch of stuff, but I didn't see anything. So. If, if I'm not mistaken, though, I think there are poisons that do give you uh, some minor armor buffs, but I think. But I'd be looking at possibly giving up my um, crusher or my uh, my weakening enchant. Well, which I tend to run for obviously for the group utility, right? Well, you could consider putting it on the one-hander weapon. Um, uh, weakening enchant on the one-hander weapon—it's not too significant, but okay. But um, well, I'll get to resistances here in a bit. Sorry if I'm bored. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, do you guys have any other questions about gear as a dragon hold? And from the, from the stream, Indigo also mentioned you could also run charge trait on the one-hander weapon. That's one of the things you can do, like it, like charge shock enchantment to also help uh, off balance and such, off balance uptime and such. So, all right, if we have no questions, I'll move on to the next slide. So, Munda stones. Um, so the four primary Munda stones. There are thirteen Munda stones in the ESO, but. Usually only four of them are really applicable. The two main ones for tanks usually are the Atronach, which is compounded by divine traits or jewelry traits and enchants or sets. Uh, the Lord is max health, which is compounded by divine jewelry traits and sets. Um, the other two Munda stones are sort of, again, like you mentioned earlier, you want your Nightblade tank to also do off DPS. You'd probably use Shadow rather than Atro and Lord. Because that's the current Munda stone that most DPS use right now, or should be using. And this, obviously this can change from patch to patch, whether it's going to be Thief next patch or um, whatever next patch. And then we have the Steed. Now Steed's kind of kind of situational, but these are the four Munda stones I've seen in use most commonly. The other uh, nine Munda stones are really kind of not useful. Uh, for most people, I would not recommend using the Lady or the Serpent. The Lady just gives you resistances, which again, I'll get to in a bit. And the Serpent, which is Stam Recovery. So Stamina Recovery, you're blocking, right? You can't regen Stamina while you're blocking. So that's kind of a waste of a Mundus turn for most people. 
Uh, do you guys have any other do you, do you guys have any questions about the Mundustin? No. Okay, moving on. All right, so I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in 1943, uh, there was this poster. It's a pretty good poster uh, during World War II. Like food is a weapon, don't waste it. <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about foods for tanks and sugar skulls, purple tristat, and other foods we're gonna talk about here. Um, so as a dragon hold. The best food right now is sugar skulls, and you can get it from the Witches Festival event, the recipe, I mean, or you can just buy it. I'm not sure what the prices are right now, but at least on PCNA, they're like 900 gold or 1K a piece. Now, um, the reason why it's the best food now is because it gives slightly more max stats than the purple tristat food most things use, and it gives you free health recovery. Now, health recovery um, may not be a huge deal, but it's free, so why not? It's like every two seconds you get more of that. So it's basically free, free healing in a way. So that's why it's the best food right now. And I do highly recommend using it. Um, but obviously, you can use purple tristat food if you want to, you know, save gold and stuff like that. Or save mats if you're crafting it. Um, but I'd like to ask you guys why you think purple tristat food is the most commonly used food for tanks. Do you guys have an idea of why? Is it gives all three stat. I mean, obviously, but the purple's um, higher, isn't it? Well, up until the sugar skulls. Well, it's not as good in terms of specifically stamina or magicka ver uh, versus the blue versions of those. So you get more magicka and stamina or more magicka and health, more of two out of a buy stat food. But at the same time, uh, it's I would think it's because it's the easiest to manage my attribute points. Correct. With. Basically, it gives all stats, and most importantly, it does give you health. And tanks, no matter what class or race you are, um, you, you need all three all three stats at one point. You have you do tend to have a couple classes that have more magic skills, like Necromancer. But in general, you still need Stam to block. You still need Stamina to dodge roll. You still need Stamina to break free. You need magic to heal yourself, you need magic to taunt, you need stamina to taunt, and of course you need health, because you're a tank. You need, you're need you taking all the heavy hits from the bosses, you're taking the most damage in the group. If you go to ESOlogs.com and you look at some logs and raids, any raid, uh, there's a section where you can look at the damage taken, and <laughs> the tanks are always at the top. So you definitely want the purple tri stat. Now the other foods, like potent, um, which one is potent brew? Red Frothgar, green, and Bystat foods. Uh, this is a matter of when, not really a matter of why. So what I mean is these are really situational. I personally used uh, Red Frothgar as a tank for specific fights. So like I needed more Magicka recovery. I didn't need more max Magicka or max Stamina. Um, and the, free, the, the health is also good. And I needed it for boss one in Veteran Halls of Fabrication because I was helping the group. Uh, purge, so I was casting Purge quite a bit, and as you guys know, probably that Purge is a really expensive skill. So it's a matter of when, it's a matter of situation. And some tanks have used uh, during a fight to switch foods. Like, let's say in Veteran Cloud Rest Hard Moon, you're tanking Zamaja, you have uh, Sugar Skulls active or Purple Tristat active, and then you can actually, in your quick slots, switch to green food during the fight of. Uh, and specifically execute because the way some mechanics work uh, the higher health you are the harder it is to heal yourself so Zimaja's so Bane is uh, gonna be really rough to heal through for, for yourself or for the healers if you have like 60k health or 50k health <laughs> so uh, it's a matter of when um, these foods so don't discard the idea of okay purple is always best in the slot or sugar skulls is always best in the slot um, but always do consider the fact that you do have the option of using all the other foods in the game. So pretty important to keep that in mind. Does anyone have any questions about foods or anything? Before you move on? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right, so we're almost done the overview. Sorry if you're bored. All right, so champion points, mitigation, and stats. So uh, I'm going to put this in Discord as well. It's... Really, you don't have to memorize this, because it's just there for reference. 
Okay, so mitigation is calculated like this. Obviously, I'm I'm horrible at math. I, I'm Asian, but I'm horrible at math. And looking at this gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but it, it but you know once you sort of like go through it, it, it makes sense even to me. Uh, this is basically the formula for mitigation. And as you can see in the front of the formula here, we, we see minor main being calculated before a couple other things. And this makes uh, minor main really, really important. Uh, regardless of if you're a Dragon Knight, Templar, or whatever, you always need to supply a source of minor main on the boss or something. Because minor main typically, it's it saves lives. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that. Uh, really important to keep that in mind. Uh, also, you do get minor main from usually Heroic Slash, which is the morph you should be using from your sword and board uh, skill line. And that also gives you minor heroism, which gives you more ulti. So that's pretty important. So minor main is really, really important. Don't underestimate it. Even if it says it's minor, it's pretty major. Uh, now, the next big thing is major ward and major resolve. And there's no reason to not have a source of major ward, major resolve. Even if you're not going to use a class ability that gives it, you usually have it in the form of uh, the Mage's Guild skill, line, skill balance. So it's like a free armor boost. You should always use it. It's like no big deal. And then you can take into consideration class skills and buffs and debuffs later. You just always want to make sure you have at least minor maim and major ward, major resolve. Uh, resistances. So, uh, I forgot your name. Russell, Russell911. Um, you asked about resistances. And you said you were worried that you weren't getting to the max cap, right? That's the thing is, is even like when I'm, even when I have balance up for the, uh, for the major ward, major resolve that it gives, uh, if I'm not pouring, I think, I think I've got like, 50 or 60 CP right now between uh, spell resist and uh, heavy armor focus, and that that with uh, major ward, major resolve, and four um, the four big pieces being uh, yeah the higher armor value traits reinforced. I'm getting just two cap on my spell resist and I'm sitting at like six or seven hundred below cap on my physical resist okay all right so resistances I'll explain this way uh, so math wise it's up to 50% mitigation you can gain from having mm -hmm. 33,000 resistances that's the cap um, obviously it's not a hard cap you can go over it but it doesn't actually do anything beyond 33,000. And we can solve this by, or know this by uh, multiplying 660 resistances by 50. So 660 resistance is amount, amounts to about 1% mitigation. But uh, you say you're trying to get max cap. I, for I've been told it makes a significant difference. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and from what I've seen, I, I can't, I don't, I don't necessarily feel that it makes that big of a difference, but at the same time, like every, everyone that I've ever talked to about tanking makes a really big deal about spending the extra CP to get the cap. And I'm like, I don't know if I feel that it, that I need it, but if, you know, these are people that have done end game, uh, end game content. So I'm kind of just trying to follow that example. Okay. Whoever told you that, uh, don't listen to them. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to be toxic, but just don't listen no, no, to them. No, 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 that's All right, um, 33,000, okay. That's a big reason why, I, why I'm here. Okay. I want to I wanna learn what really matters. <laughs> okay, so you don't have to get to cap. It's really, it's one of the most misunderstood concepts about ESO tanking. You don't have to get to this cap. It, like, I don't... <laughs> Even in like the hardest fights, in the hardest trials, you did not have to get near the cap, or even close to it, or, or even close to getting near the cap. Um, I would say like the minimum, or a really comfortable minimum, would be about twenty four thousand into your physical and spell resistances for everything. I'm not talking about dungeons either. I'm just talking about like Maul, Lord Cards, Hard Mood, Sunspire, Hard Mood, everything, Vet Cloud, Rest, Hard Mood, everything. 
I don't think I even have close to 27,000 or 28,000 spell resistance for like uh, Asylum or Cloud Rest or anything. Like, you don't need cap. That's my main point. <laughs> so, if you want to go with a bare minimum or something or a comfortable minimum, I would suggest 24,000. And then. You know, honestly, beyond like 27, 28,000, I, I personally don't feel a difference. And I certainly won't feel a difference at 33,000. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that allows me a whole lot more flexibility. Uh, yeah, yeah. All that really does for you, unfortunately, when you're trying to get the cap is... It, it just kind of... It, it really constricts you because you say you're wearing like four reinforced pieces when you could be wearing like four sturdy or four infuse or or three infuse or something, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, that's the thing is I could be wearing more infuse pieces. I could be wearing divine pieces for that matter. I mean, right now I'm going four four reinforced and four sturdy, but I mean I could definitely use I could definitely use higher stam and high. Well, as a tank, you can't. You can never have enough mag and stam. So, right. if I could infuse those, since I'm tri statting the big pieces anyway, like I can get a heck of a lot more out of them. Right, um, and also this also allows you to put champion points elsewhere. When I'm yeah. al when if you look in my Discord and you're looking through all the uh, champion point allocations I put up for uh, the red tree, you'll notice that really heavy armor focus and spell shield is like the last thing. I consider so this will actually help you in terms of where uh, you put leftover points right pretty much uh, so this will actually help you um, to okay. get away from your restricted build so hopefully this helps I think it will all right and uh, I don't know why I put this down here health stamina and magic is very all right, right okay so the amount of health you need the amount of stamina you need the amount of magic you need Totally variable. It's really, again, what I said earlier, uh, what you need and then what you want. So let's say you're tanking a boss with 35,000 health and you're getting really close to dying every time with a heavy attack or something or uh, you, you're afraid it might make a mistake. Maybe bump it up to like 38,000 or 40,000 and then go from there. It's a matter of really experimenting. You can't really, I can't really tell you guys, okay, this is the best stats for this because um, you know every every tank runs different a different spec uh, d does anyone else have any questions well um, so are you saying that you alter your champion points for every fight yes uh, if you actually look into the discord and you scroll down the channels I have uh, not fight, but more for trial, like trial by trial basis. Oh, okay, great. Right, you, you don't you don't have to change CP for every single fight. No, no, that's that's too much. <laughs> you, just by content, and even then, even for a lot of these, you don't really have to change your CP. Um, like for the Kragalorn trials, like Hell Raw, Ethereum, and. Sanctum, you don't really have to really change in between them. It helps, but if you have full CP, you have a good group, it typically, ultimately does not matter in the end. But uh, yeah, I do advise when you're switching between drastically different trials, like uh, you're going from, uh, let's see, Cloud Rest to a really like completely on the opposite side of the spectrum, uh, from Cloud Rest to Sanctum. I would, yeah, or half or whatever, I would definitely change or adjust your red CP at the very least. Well, that's one wonderful that you have them listed there. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it until the next slide. Okay, so another thing I want to kind of go over, and then we'll go from there. Uh, block cost. So block cost, it's not really, actually, it used to be a pretty hot topic for a lot of tanks. I'm not... I'm not sure if most people even talk about it anymore, but it block cost is pretty important <laughs> because it it calculates the cost of your how much your stam is being drained per block of an attack. So, uh, brief history after Dragon Bones patch, I think two years ago or last year, um, or before it, 
the base block cost. This is the formula. This was the old formula. I'll actually post it in the Discord real quick before I continue. Uh... Oh, jeez. Okay, so this used to be the old, old uh, block cost formula. You don't really have to know all about it, but basically, if you notice the difference between uh, the pre-Dragon Bones block cost formula and the post-Dragon Bones block cost formula, you'll notice that um, there's two things that changed. The base block cost went down after Dragon Bones, and the the placement of the enchant enchantments on your jewelry, like block cost uh, reduction jewelry enchantments, uh, switched places from the end of the formula to the front of the formula. And what this did basically was it sort of made block cost reduction jewelry enchantments almost useless. So there are still a few tanks out there that have told people in my Discord, like, hey, you want to put three block cost enchantments on your jewelry. That's wrong. You don't want to do that. It's just, it, it gives diminishing returns after like the first one or two. Um, that's why you see a lot of tank builds on YouTube or whatever from uh, people who do endgame raid with no block cost enchantments on their jewelry. They have like three magic recovery jewelry enchantments or depending on the build, they have three potion acceleration glyphs on their jewelry. So if you, you can you can use block cost enchantments. It still does reduce the block cost, but not so much compared to two years ago. So if someone tells you, "Oh, yeah, use three block cost enchantment glyphs on your jewelry," don't don't do it. It's useless. Um, and another, you don't agree with this? Anymore. I don't know. I, I I think it's pretty useless. Um, another question that a lot of people ask me is how how many sturdy pieces again this is up to you but um each each sturdy piece when golded out gives a four percent block cost reduction and you can punch it into the formula here after you do everything but note that shadow ward which is a cp for block cost reduction um is is a bit stronger than sturdy pieces and i would say like for most people a minimum of four sturdy or any situation if you don't feel like Switching out traits or whatever, or a piece or a gear, is a minimum of four, and that's it. That's it for block cost. Do you guys have any questions? Should we use infused jewelry? Yeah. No. Okay, and that's that's pretty much it. That's the basics, like the absolute basics. Now that we're all on the same page, um, uh, do you guys have any specific content you're curious about in terms of tanking? Or like, because like, uh, the following classes until the 11th of November, I'll like, you, you tell me what content you want to learn. And then we, I, I can schedule raids where either you can come to or I can just stream and go over the fight with you as we do the raid. So, uh, is there any content you guys are curious um, about? Yeah, um... <laughs> You first. Okay, so the only thing that I have tanked is Cloud Rest um, in a 12 man group. Okay. And so I would like to learn how to tank some other. Any trial, basically, or uh, do you have a specific trial in mind? Uh, no, I'm just 101 tanking for trials. Okay. Basic. I'm a chicken. Only time I would say you have some any block cost reduction. Can I throw in on that? So, uh, what about the axes? Since uh, a lot of uh, new um, groups are doing AA, that the axes seem to be a, a hard tanking okay. thing. Sure thing. I'll put that here. Hey, oh man. And, uh, Hardman. wait. Spider. AA or just AA Hardman? Is there a bit different? AA, sorry, AA hard mode, did you say? Did you want to learn AA or AA hard mode? Because AA hard mode has like store metros and meteors. Yeah, I think maybe since we're in the room of 101. 
Hard mode. <laughs> okay, A R. I'm I'm with hand there. All right, A R man. Does anybody else have a uh, specific content they want to learn in the coming days? I'm I'm trying to figure out uh, best practices for off tanking vet Sunspire. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I need to learn that. I'm in a frog, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my first completion, but that has been, I can, I, I've been able to main tank it through, um, but the off tank is, has been excessively challenging, especially with the, uh, Iron Servants. And, yeah. You're rarely charged on CD, I'd say. I know that's going to get more difficult with the upcoming patch, because... Burn is going to go down. Okay, so... Okay, so off taking some inspired maintaining a yard moon. Anybody else? Or, I mean, you guys can suggest more than one if you want. I'm, I'm kind of happy with whatever. I, I have not done anything outside of a couple of that dungeons. I'm, I'm very, very new to tanking, so okay. all of it's a learning experience for me. <laughs> okay, I'll think of something for you. <laughs> Uh, that cloud rest too. Yeah, that cloud rest. I'll come along. Uh, Actually, what what part about that cloud rest in particular? I ha we haven't made it past Gallon Way yet, so. <laughs> Is that for a hard moon plus one plus no, that's, two? No, that's just that's just standard uh, VCR plus zero. Um, again, pro groups. Uh, I'm not part of any uh, end game guilds. So we're mid tier as far as the guilds that I'm in. This is on console. Okay. But, um, and then I guess the the king of all would be the V Mall and figuring out how to take the twins. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like that one too. Taking V Mall, a hard mode, sudden square, CR plus zero. Anything else? Actually, I, I don't think it would hurt to uh, to see a couple of different methods on how to tank um, a few of the different bosses uh, for, for Depths of Malatar. Um, I've been with plenty of groups that just the DPS isn't there, the healing isn't there, or I was DPSing and the tanking ability wasn't there. And it's like trying to get these people to see, hey, these are the skills that you need, or this is the technique that you really need to use, and we have to work as a team. And the tank needs to be able to coordinate the different different pieces to, to get the whole group successfully through it. And then when you hit hard mode, you know, you, you have the wall coming every time at the end, you know, and and so having having like strong tanking skills for that might be good because that's really where you need to step up and be a leader for the group for that, you know. Okay. So Depths of Molotar, A Hard Moon, Off Taking Sun Spire, Tanking Cloud Rest, and Tanking Mala. B Mall Twins. Any anyway, anybody else? Well, I do have something to say. I mean, how, well, how do you feel about should the tank be leading the group um, in anything, or do you just let the DPS run it? Like raid calling and raid leading? Yeah. So, so, most raid leads I've known are support players. Like tanking. They're tanks or healers. Um, I found it most comfortable to raid lead as a healer. Um, also, I'm also comfortable raid leading from a tank position. So I think that would be the same case for whoever you're raiding with. However, there have been some really good players that can DPS and raid lead at the same time. I think that's probably the hardest position to raid lead from as a DPS, because not only do you have to keep an eye on people and raid, raid call and do your own rotation and mechanics, um, so it, it's, a, it's a bit difficult to raid lead from a DPS position. Okay, thank you. Yeah, even even when I have a DPS leading a raid, that DPS is generally delegating raid calls to the support roles, whether it be the off tank or 
uh, whatever healer happens to sit farthest back and has the best view. Um, and that tends to be the best way to go, at least in my experience, um, just because, again, for a lot of callouts, you have to have a view that allows you to see things. And most of the time, the DPS isn't going to be in a position to do that. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, healer or tanking, or healer or tank positions. Generally, I mean, there are some fantastic players that have raid led from a DPS position, but that's pretty rare in my opinion compared to tanks or healers. Uh, do you guys have any other general questions or suggestions for what you want to learn? This, this might be way farther down on the one-on-one -on -one than most people, but I kind of would like to understand more of, uh, on the CP side, like what, what CP allocations should I really be focusing on and, and what they do and what they, um, okay. what, what, what they change. Actually, we can go over that right now. Um, let me log in here. I, I want to know where we send you the money for this. <laughs> it's, it's free. <laughs> Sub, sub, sub know, on Twitch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. It's an amazing resource, and I can't thank you guys enough for helping us. Yes, thank you True so much. It's amazing. Well, the purpose of this whole thing is to get more people into endgame. Um, so, from the perspective of the endgame community, things are not very good for for ESO because it's like. There, there hasn't been an increase in population for the in-game community. That's why you always may hear people say, oh, the game is dying, but that's really from the perspective of people who've been playing a lot. Um, there hasn't really been an increase in the population of in-game players, especially on PC and A, or I, I think some people have said PC and console, some console servers. Um, but the whole purpose of this is to bring more people in. Is that that's beneficial for everyone. Uh, but yeah, don't don't be uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes or whatever during your transition into endgame. That's everyone makes mistakes. I don't care who it is, who you can name from Twitch or YouTube. Everyone has made mistakes. Everyone grows that way. It's like not a big deal if you fuck up. The the best thing to do if you fuck up is to learn from it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That that goes for life as well. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Alright, um, so on my stream, I'll go over the CP real quick. So you said what the most important CP is, uh... Yeah, just like what, what, what I should be really focusing on and, and kind of like, just a, not, I don't, I don't want to go so in depth because I don't want to bore everyone no, that's here, fine. but just, um, kind of an understanding of, of what the CP actually adjust so like i i, I kind of know like my two basics for my resistances but i'm not 100 percent clear on exactly what this cp changes in my build and my attributes and my stats okay so let's go over this real quick so uh the easiest cp as you said is spell shield and heavy armor focus if you're wearing heavy armor you can also if you're wearing medium armor you can also do medium armor focus but um Spell shield and heavy armor focus, as I explained earlier in the resistances section of the lecture, 660 resistance amounts to 1%. Now obviously you don't have to get uh, over or exact the 1% mitigation because this obviously adds on to your already existing stats. So it, it's sort of an afterthought for a lot of fights, spell shield and heavy armor focus because um, what was it? Like Russell said earlier, he was trying to get up to max resistances. You don't really need to. And even if you don't really try to get to max resistances, you typically end up pretty close um, on a lot of uh, builds like Yonakrin and even the Alkash. You end up near like 27, 28,000 resistances. So, in terms of priority, spell shield and heavy armor focus is generally not looked at first. The first thing we want to look at in terms of CP is Ironclad. Uh, it reduces your damage taken against direct damage attacks by X percent. And what this basically means is you don't mitigate damage of dots. Dots are thick skinned, or damage over time effects are thick skinned. Um, most bosses 
do direct damage abilities on you. Uh, name me a boss and that boss probably does at least two direct damage abilities on you. Olms is, for the most part, mostly direct damage. Uh, Rakat is, can be direct damage. Hellra, Warrior Hard Moon is direct damage. So, this also includes A, like, not, not all AoEs are direct damage, some are, um, most are dots. Um, it's kind of hard to classify this, but basically Ironclad is one of the most important ones as a tank. Okay. Uh, generally, you probably want to have anywhere between 66 to 81 Ironclad. 81 Ironclad is basically like uh, what a lot of tanks tend to run because it's, it's a lot of mitigation against direct damage attacks. That includes heavy attacks, light attacks, uh, special abilities that aren't dots, and mechanics, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the next CP we, or champion points we can look at here are Hardy, Elemental Defender, and Dickskin. So Dickskin is pretty important as well, but there obviously will be fights where you can figure out, oh hey, I'm not actually getting that many uh, strong dots on me. Um, I think a really good fight where an attack from a boss is both a damage over time and direct damage is the warrior hardman when he does his flurry a thousand cuts in the wind or whatever i don't know uh but yeah uh your mitigation dips into both thick skin and ironclad for scenarios like that unless you fixed it or changed it since then <laughs> So, thick skin is pretty important, but generally speaking, most tanks usually sit around... Uh, I mean, it's pretty general range, but it depends on the fight. Um, I personally like going... At most, 66 thick skin for, like, fights where I may encounter really strong damage over time effects on me. Um, and then, yeah. And you'll see this reflected in the CPI post on my Discord. Obviously, the CPI post in my Discord isn't... You don't have to do it. Uh, it's just what I found best for myself. So there will obviously be variations um, between tanks of what their red CP is. But generally speaking, 81 Ironclad is the most common um, CP. Hardy and Elemental Defender. This is not... Uh, this, is, this also plays into mitigation. And this sort of comes after Ironclad, in my opinion. But um, generally, depending on the content again, Elemental Defender only does m mitigation against uh, magic damage, flame, frost, and shock damage. Hardy is only physical poison disease damage. So for example, in Sanctum of Fidia, uh, you get a poison dot on you constantly. Most of the attacks from the trash and the bosses are physical and poison damage. So you may want to bump it up over Elemental in terms of priority. The only Elemental damage in there is... The overcharge from the overcharger. So, um, even then, you don't need that much. You don't need an exact 10% mitigation against it, really. Because you have to also factor in that you do have physical and spell resistances as well. Um, but Hardy and Ellie, it's just a matter of what you need. And. So, yeah? Real quick okay. side question as we're going through this. Um, are any of the. Are there any of the. Um, passes that come from the CP points spent that are important that we should be focusing on as a tank? There are there are a couple. Um, but obviously you don't have to unlock the perks. I mean, they're like... They're, they, they are what they are. They're perks. So, um, for example, we'll naturally get above 30 points in the Lady. And Bulwark gives mm -hmm. you a spell resistance and physical resistance buff by 1500 when you have a shield or frost staff equipped. So that's nice, right? But you'll get it. Um, 1500, that's like a little over 2% mitigation. That's nice, but you don't have to work for it, obviously. There are some points where you may think you may need to work towards, like, reinforced the perk. Uh, when you activate block, you gain the damage shield that absorbs X amount of damage for 3 seconds, it occurs once every 10 seconds. This does not. Make it or break it. It's, um, it's not a whole lot of damage. Bro. No, it's it's not really. Uh, there is a, a couple of CP perks I'll show you here, but before that, uh, let me 
go over a few things. Uh, quick recovery and heavy armor focus, like we said, heavy armor focus is kind of a last thought for most scenarios. Uh, quick recovery, now this does sort of depend on class sometimes as well. Dragon Knights do get an innate healing received from Draconic uh, power skill line, where is it? You're right, while well, Draconic power abilities active, your healing received is increased by 12%, so you may not need to put as much into quick recovery as you would on a couple other classes. So this is really up for up to you to decide. I, I don't think I've ever had a situation where besides Cloud Rest, maybe I needed I absolutely needed beyond a 10% into quick recovery. I would not do more than 10% into quick recovery. So that's about 43 points. For any scenario or whatever, any content mm -hmm. I would not go above 10% into quick recovery as any tank. Okay. Um, and you asked what the most important CP perks were. Um, the blue CP wise, I really, really do encourage you to try to get to last stand perk that's unlocked at 120 points into the ritual. When you fall below 20% health, you gain major heroism, granting three ultimate every one and a half second for eight seconds. This has saved me quite a bit. Um, and it's also pretty nice to gain major heroism, uh, especially as a Dragon Knight tank, because you do get resources and health back when you pass an ultimate. Uh, other other things that you do want to keep in mind is probably just tactician. Um, when you use dodge roll to dodge and attack, you set the enemy off balance. So this can be used to guarantee an off balance proc on an enemy. Um, there are a couple other things that people may say are slightly important, but those are the two main perks so that you can look at. So as a tank, you're putting a bunch of blue CP then primarily into the ritual and the, the, the Atronach, or is that the mage? Um, it's mostly the apprentice, the ritual, and if you want the tactician perk, the Atronach. The Atronach. Right. Um, this is a bit messed up, but... The Ritual Tree, how you allocate it is up to you. Like, let's say you are going to be an off-tank DPS. Uh, you can obviously set it up in a way that's DPS CP. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can just do whatever. Blue CP is like... <laughs> um, besides the healing CP points, it's not as important as, arguably, I think people will disagree with me, as red and green. But yeah, that's it for CP. Does anyone, has, does anyone else have any questions? Um, I guess the only other CP question I would have had was Bastion. Being that I am a Dragon Knight tank and I do cast a lot of shields. Oh, in form the red CP. And stuff like that, how... Is, is it actually effective in helping with that, or is it just kind of a work, kind of a waste of space that just is taunting you to spend CP that you don't need to? I, w <laughs> I would say it's not the most useful. <laughs> I would say compared to the raw mitigation you can get from Ironclad, uh, Heavy Armor Focus, and so on, it's not worth it. Okay. So in terms of priority, I would rank it below quick recovery All right. yeah especially for DK I mean I don't think it's gonna do much for you as a DK tank I think back when we didn't have the ironclad perk or CP I mean uh, some tanks did be put in pit points in the bash because there's really nothing else to put in Right there, there was something I else guess too. I just didn't under. Well, I guess my, my my question with that is I've never understood what it meant by increasing effectiveness of the damage Your, shield. The, the value. Oh, okay. The value. So, so, if, so if I'm so if I'm popping igneous shield and it gives me, and, and it happen and it starts as a six k shield. It, it, it yeah, it's a percentage yeah. of the of the value of, of that of that value. Okay. Right. That actually makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So it affects the, va the value. I mean, some some would probably say uh, it's good because shields are affected by your resistances now. It didn't used to be; just used to be a simple value. Um, 
it's incredible. It was incredible. But um, some would say maybe like shields are more important now. But generally speaking, I don't think fashion will make it or break it. That's pretty much it. Are those a Steel Series arc? Nope, that helps a lot. Yeah. Alright, let's see. Main tanking a hard move, off tanking Sunspar, tanking plus zero, tanking ball, there's a Molotar. Any, anybody else got any suggestions or questions? I mean, you can ask whatever at this point. I think we're nearing the end. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm good outside of just trying to sort out what gear combinations I like that work well together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been I've been running okay. Warrior Poet and Battalion Defender as a combination for about three or four weeks now, and I'm I'm really comfortable in it. But at the same time, I also know that I'm limiting my group utility. Okay, so I think you weren't here when we went over this, actually. Uh, so the gear. Uh, I was watching. I was watching. Oh, okay, the you were watching. Stream. I hadn't joined the Discord. Okay, okay. So, uh, really, I think. Do you have Evan, Alkosh, or Yolnikrin, or have you not started? Uh, I have standard Yolnikrin, I have Alkosh, I have Evan, I have Dragon Guard, Battalion Defender, um, Torigs. I think those are the main sets that I'm holding on to. I have all the monster sets. And you're talking about this within the context of a trial or a dungeon? Um, yes. I've when it comes to the dungeons um I haven't had any real issues running either Ebon and Battalion Defender or Ebon and Alkosh um I'll throw Battalion Defender on for some of the harder stuff like uh scale caller hard mode um but outside of that I can run it's when I get into the 12 man content that I seem to be less effective and more affected by like the lower health that I get from Alkosh, so I run beefier sets, which is where Warrior Poet comes in, which is why I guess I'm more comfortable in it, just because of the extra health. Okay, I mean, you could probably just work on transitioning out of Warrior Poet. Okay. But yeah, um, again, in terms of gear, don't be too overwhelmed if you're just starting out tanking. Like, like I said, just try to get the highlighted sets first, and then everything that follows is dependent on your group. And some of these are pretty easily attainable too, like Torx Pact is craftable. I think Plague Doctor is really cheap. Um, Evan is easy to farm. Yeah, Hercene is also easy, Worm is also easy, Vaults of Madness. So yeah, don't be too uh, overwhelmed. Yeah, the, the sets don't scare me. I, I main a healer, so I'm used to having <laughs> a thousand things. Yeah. Really. Uh, I, I definitely my my foray into tanking is one I, I do want to learn how to tank, and two I want to understand all three aspects. I started as a DPS. I moved into healing. I I love my healer. I'm I feel that's my strong suit. But I also know the more I understand how it how how to tank and how tanks work, then I also know that I can be a better support as a healer for them as well. Oh yeah, playing all three rules gives you a lot of insight into handling stuff. <laughs> Especially yeah. during raids, for sure. It's good. Uh, someone mentioned I didn't go with green CP. Do you guys have any questions about green CP for tanks? Um, um, well, I, I, I mean, I'm basically... My tank, it's kind of if I need Magicka recovery, I pop up a little extra. If I need you know, Stam recovery, um, I don't use anything outside of those. I mean, obviously, I think Mooncalf, Arcanist, and Tenacity. I, would you ever use Healthy? I. Uh, de <laughs> depends on the build. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Green CV is re very dependent on. Not, not your group. I don't want to say that, but it's mostly dependent on. I'll be back now. Thanks very much. Yeah, no problem. It's mostly dependent on the content you're doing and your build. So if you have a build 
and you're not using the Atro Stone, or you don't have magic recovery glyphs on your jewelry or whatever, it's really pointless to kind of put almost anything into Arcanist. But if you have a build that has a Atronach Mundus active, you have Dream Magic Recovery Glyphs on your jewelry, um, and you have maybe a set that gives one or two sets set bonuses of Magic, uh, magic Recovery, yeah, Arcanus is great. Um, because these are percentages. So if you have like 500 Magic Recovery, it's like useless to put 43 points into Arcanist. Um, but again, it also depends on the content. So like in certain trials like AS Hard Moon or Asylum Hard Moon, I don't put any points into the Warlord because I shouldn't be CC. There's no CCs in there except not interrupting Lothis, which shouldn't happen. But you know, that again depends on the group because if it's a progression group, maybe he will CC you if your interrupter doesn't get the bash or you can't get the bash. So yeah, uh, that's that's green CP really. That does bring me to another question. Vampirism. Okay, vampirism. <laughs> I, I have it on my tank. I was told that there's no reason as a tank that you shouldn't run it. Um, and I know that just because it's easily managed with Bloody Mars and, and all that fun stuff, and you can race form your way back up if you need to increase it. But I was curious as to because obviously the reduced health recovery that it causes is part of the reason why you wouldn't bother putting points into healthy. But just your overall thoughts on it. For well, days. the the primary reason why we don't want to put any points into healthy um, for green tree is most like the gear I've shown you guys on the slideshow like they don't really have any health recovery bonuses so again like if you don't have enough of one thing it's useless to try to apply a percentage to it like 10% mm -hmm. of 500 is like what not not much like right Five. <laughs> yeah exactly or, so no, it's, 50 yeah. 50 I mean so it's like not much um, so that's the primary reason why we won't use healthy vampirism so it's not really why we don't use healthy uh, vampirism so those people that told you it's fine to be a vampire even if you're a tank is mostly correct and not just fine but yeah uh, or a why fine, not i mean preferred right yeah it's um, like a preferred a preferred thing you get the extra damage mitigation and you get the extra recovery uh yeah recovery on or restored resources i guess for your uh magic and stamina Right. Well, there's two things I will tell you about being a vampire as a tank. Uh, number one, don't be stage four ever, because it's just it, like stage two, stage three gives you the benefits of su supernatural recovery and undeath. Stage four gives you nothing. Stage four gives you absolutely nothing. It just <laughs> just gives you more damage taken against fire and, and other stuff. Um, I just mm -hmm. would never want to be a stage four vamp. Even if it's like, I have a, yeah. Um, now, the only place where I would not be a vampire as a tank, and this is actually um, pretty important, is in Sunspire. You you don't want to be a vampire in Sunspire. I mean, you can be a vampire. You can be maybe stage two or something at most. But uh, so, so the way they calculated the damage taken in terms of fire for vampires, the formula for it apparently changed around uh, before or after Ellsbury launched. So in effect, you're actually getting a lot more than the tooltip suggests. So I, I really would not be a vampire in Sunspire as a tank. Especially if you're tanking the fire breaths from the dragon. So just Dragons. stage but nothing higher. Stage one, I would say. I mean, I I really would not want to be actively a vampire, so it's fine. Just because of the just because of how they changed the formula for whatever reason. Um, but for every other trial, it's fine. It's fine. Just Sunspire, I would not be a vampire personally. Not to say there's probably people who have tanked it as a vampire, but. Or stage yeah. three or something, but stage four, stage three, stage 
yeah, stage three, stage four, Vampire and Sunspire was really rough, <laughs> to say the least. I can say I made it to the Ventos stage three while I was stage three, so. But that being said, it, it wasn't easy either. Right. So, I just would yeah. not want to go beyond stage one or two in Sunspire, personally. Okay. Probably just stage one. <laughs> That's the only place, though. Sorry. At some point, I would like to go over your, um, your skill bars. Okay, skill bars. Uh, for what class? That's uh. Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight. Okay. Ooh, this is gonna be a big one. Uh, let's see. Specifically for what trial or what fight? <laughs> so that changes too. Yes, yeah, some sometimes your well, a lot of times your skill bars can't change. Um, obviously, um, you can go through all the trials with the same bars, but there will be times where you may need to swap out skills or do or have certain skills that are uh, needed for the group. And it also depends on your position as well. Gen generally speaking, um, what's a good base toolbox to have? Yes. So rather than like rather, a, than, rather than what we would slot, just the skills. That okay, like a standard like kind of thing. Yeah, just kind of the standard skills that you want to be, you want to have available, um, that kind of maximize your ability and content. Okay. Like I know, I know my toolbox is unrelenting grip, um, green dragon's blood, igneous shield, uh, ransack. Now I was running pierce armor for the longest time, and recently went to ransack with the uh, with the changes from scale breaker. And then uh, balance, obviously, barrier, war horn, uh, aggressive horn, things like that. Okay, so if I had to give you a really standard bar setup for like everything, potentially, um, you're pretty close to the mark. So like unrelenting grip for dungeons, arenas, even trials where you may need to stack ads. Some trials you can't really use unrelenting grip to stack ads because they're usually elite ads. You have to actually taunt them at a distance and draw them in with a distance to stack on to other ads. But in general, unre unrelenting grip, sure. Uh, Ransack or Pierce Armor, depends on the group. Igneous Shield, Heroic Slash, again, we talked about this before in the lecture. Minor Maim, really important. Minor heroism, really important. Uh, balance, and of course for your ultimate aggressive horn. Uh, for your back bar, it can be choking talons. This is a really, really, really good skill in general. Uh, even if they're elite adds, they're still affected by their minor maim. So this is really useful for AOE trash fights where, where there's a lot of adds. They're still afflicted by the minor maim, even if they're not CC'd by the by choking talons. Uh, inner range uh, is also pretty good to have because it's a range taunt, and they did nerf the cost of it, reduce the cost of it. So it's really it's uh, like drag as of as of Scalebreaker, it's it's been it's never been a greater time to be a tank to be honest. Um, and of course, if, depending on whether you're using a staff on the back bar, which for the most case you are. Uh, elemental blockade and then you do have the choice this patch of going noxious uh breath not not engulfing flames because there was a change to engulfing flames um bas they basically made it so that it's harder for dragon knight tanks to apply the full debuff value of engulfing flames so you need a mixture of both max magicka and spell damage i think it's like 3300 spell damage or so to uh, get the full value of the debuff. So right now on my screen it says 1%, not 10%, right? Quick, quick question on the talons. Does that apply to bosses as well, just in case you're yes. not in a group that's playing raid composition where somebody else is bringing minor maim for a boss? Yeah, uh, the minor maim from choking talons does affect bosses. Although you should okay. really be using heroic slash for bosses. Because it's uh, just, yeah. yeah, right. Um, where was I? Right, right, so you can do Noxious Breath, or you also do have the option of using Razor Caltrops, uh, 
afford a major fracture, both skills do AOE major fracture. It's just a matter of whichever you're comfortable with. Uh, I believe Noxious Breath is a little bit cheaper, I believe. Or about the same. Uh, on the back, on the last skill is Green Dragon Blood. Now the reason why we go Green Dragon Blood instead of the other morph, the other morph scales off of your Max Magica, I believe, rather than your uh, Max health. health, right? So Green Dragon Blood uh, heals you for 37% of your missing health. I've seen a lot of tanks needlessly use Dragon Blood at like 70-80% of their max health when they're like not even low. It's very ineffective when you're not missing much health. But once you get to about 60, 50, 40, 30 percent, you're gonna see a huge burst heal, obviously, because it, it's based off of how much health you're missing. Uh, but also, we want to go Green Dragon Blood because you get Major Fortitude, Major Endurance, and Minor Vitality. Gives you 20 percent health recovery and stamina recovery. The stamina recovery is, again, not vital or, or even the health recovery. But the healing received is what we primarily want, so that's why we go Green Dragon Blood. And the ultimate is going to be Magma Shell on the back bar. Um, Magma Shell does not make you invincible, but it makes you almost invincible for about 12 seconds. It also gives you a shield to other people as well for about 10 seconds. That's it. That 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 would be my standard bar solo. Um, obviously, you can swap out a few couple skills for certain scenarios. But uh, that's that's pretty standard. That's what I would run on DK tank. And uh, obviously the placement of the skills, whether you want chains on the back bar or uh, balance on the back bar, that's preference as well. You don't have to do this exactly the way I put it. It's just a matter of comfort for you guys. I, I don't know why, but I've heard that you need to run um, Warborn or whatever on the it makes absolutely no difference if you run War War on the back bar or the front bar as a Dragon Knight tank. It's just a matter of preference. So which, which skill do you think you need more and which bar do you spend the most time on? If you think you're going to need Magma Shell to save your butt um, and you spend more time on your front bar, then that would be where you would want to put it. I personally prefer my magma shell usually on the back bar because the back bar tends to have slightly less resistances than the front bar. And just in case I'm caught off guard, you know what I mean? I can just mm -hmm. hop in. Shield you shouldn't really be going down too much. So, I mean, it, again, it's preference. Now, is that something when you use your ult, are you using them every time they get available? Or, uh, you're picking and choosing when you're using it. Uh, for forming content or trials? Trials. Trials, you always want to rotate your horns with the other support players in the group. So typically, there's at least always four horns available in any trial. Uh, you, mm -hmm. the other tank, and two healers. Um, you don't want to randomly cast horn. I mean, there's that's a pretty big discussion. <laughs> uh, it's basically yeah. you have to go into rotation. So you do a horn. And once the major force runs out after 10 seconds, then the next person goes. Then the next person goes after that uh, major force runs out. Then the last person goes after the third person's major force runs out. Uh, especially if you're going for a burn or something. They're, I mean, it's all dependent on how long the fight will be or whatever. Um, generally speaking, you want a high major force uptime. So by the time your fourth person has gone, you should have a, an aggressive horn available. Uh, soon, yeah, but I know for I know for for more of the uh, the score pushing groups where they where they can hold um, where they can hold some of the more dangerous extra adds closer to the boss and closer to the group. But if, I know when when off tanking, sometimes you're holding farther away, and your horn may not be effective for the group because you're too far away. Um, no, you can just. Run in and yeah. blow your horn and get out. <laughs> it's really dependent on the fight. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, I've never used balance. Can, can we go with that? Oh, balance? Um, yeah, that's, that's okay, so balance is a, a major skilled skill line. Or skill, sorry. Um, it's basically you sacrifice your health 
for Magicka. So on my tooltip it says it costs 6,000 health to uh, get 3,000 Magicka. So some tank builds don't necessarily have Magicka recovery glyphs or whatever. They just depend on balance for their primary sustain method. Um, obviously, it can be risky sometimes using it, depending on how low you are on health. You don't want to be at 12,000 health on the boss fight and the hit boss is going to heavy attack you in the next second and then you use it. Six <laughs> you're at 6,000 health. Not good, but I mean, for the most part, it's pretty convenient to use. It's not always dangerous to use, but for the most part, for the most, most of the time, it's fine to use it or spam it, depending okay. on the fight. Why wouldn't you use a potion instead? Well, uh, what if you're after you run out and the potion's on cooldown, you'll use it. Well, yeah, I see your point. If it's not ready to be regenerated. Well, let me let me see. So let's see. I'm spamming Igneous uh, for whatever reason, and then I use a potion. I get it back. And then I have to use balance. It's it's just a matter of. Um, it's, it's sort of free sustain because you should, most tanks in most fights usually always get healed anyway, so it's like a free source of sustain, um, especially if you don't have a potion in, at hand or if your recovery is low. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, obviously you don't have to use balance, there are some tank builds that some uh, people that say you don't need balance, that you can just invest more into magic recovery. Uh, the only fight I don't think I use balance as, uh, on a Dragon Knight specifically, is uh, Asylum Sanctorium Hard Mode as the off tank. But everywhere else as a Dragon Knight tank, I always usually have it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It takes some time getting used to, um, but it's it's pretty it's pretty fun to use. Yeah, it's the fear factor. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, most of the time it's safe, um, especially if you have a healer. It may not be as good if you don't have a healer. So when I run Dragon Star Arena or dungeons without a healer, we just run we typically run three DPS in the tank. Uh, yeah, using balance at the wrong time is pretty bad. So, it's actually saved my butt in Dragon Star Arena a few times with no healer, just because it allows me to cast Green Dragon's Blood more. Uh, my twelve to bit six k. But uh, this this skill also kind of plays into the idea of stats, which we sort of briefly touched on earlier. Like, um, what is it? Like your stats being variables, like. If you want to use balance more often, what do you need more of? Health. Because more health means not only is it a cushion for balance, but it's also like a safety too. Like the more health you have, the safer it is to use balance. So yeah, it's all it's all connected. It's all connected. It's pretty fun. Okay, I'll try to play around. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely play around with it. Don't. Doesn't matter if you die. Um, it's just a matter of getting used to it. I guess the only other thing that I would ask is, uh, is light attack, heavy attack. How often, what form? Well, you, you heavy attack usually when either you need stamina back, or if you have <laughs> nothing else to do, your buffs and debuffs are uh, rolling and you have nothing else to do. And you don't need to block, you can just heavy attack for free stamina. Uh, light attacks, so light attacks, it's, uh, uh, like that's dependent on your sword and board, if you're light attacking your sword and board. Uh, if you can't, if you can't, uh, target, how, how to explain this, if you can't target a boss or something, like let's say boss, something is in front of the boss, your elemental blockade, will proc the Crusher Enchantment on the thing in front of the boss. So it procs Crusher Enchantment on the closest thing to you, rather than 
on a specific target, if that makes any sense. So in that case, you may need to lie attack on your staff bar on the boss if something's in front of it. Does that make well, with your staff? If that makes sense. But on your oh yeah no for yeah. sure I'm oh. just I guess I guess I'm trying because I'm always being told well you should be as a tank you should be weaving. Uh, well, it, or, it's always nice to weave, <laughs> but yeah. um, it does proc your enchantment or your poisons more often on your sword and board bar if you lie attack a bit more. I mean, I guess if I'm 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 transitioning from the. From the I'm a chicken, I'm gonna stand there and block everything and you know, cast skills from block um, to a more proactive role as a tank. Well, just just, just just to simplify things, as long as your buffing or your buffs and debuffs are up, I don't mm. no one should care what you do. But if you're just holding block forever, you're not applying crusher, you're not applying anything, you're not doing anything, then there's a problem. Yeah. No, it's 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 more for what I do, what I'm doing when I when those are already up. Um, that was six thousand. When the best times, I guess. Oh yeah, it's the, the, my buddy is again, it's five thousand. How to be more effective 100. as a tank? Not just not just be a sta not not just stand there and be a damage sponge. Um, who holds taunt and applies fracture, but actual actually finding the best ways to get more debuffs for the group and be a better utility for the group versus because um, I'm as as I get more comfortable in the role as a tank, I'm more comfortable doing doing more as a tank and being less selfish as a tank and being more utilitarian, and so I want to try and take full advantage of the utility that a tank can provide to a group uh, beyond just uh, redirecting damage. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, not sure if you were tuned in the stream before you came in when we were on the second slide, uh, first slide. Uh, the pyramid. <laughs> uh, I think I did miss the pyramid. Okay, so you missed the pyramid. It's, it's, uh, yeah. I, I also posted in Discord. The pyramid, uh, this is basically a pretty... A visual representation of uh, what tanks uh, are in the SO. I don't know, but um, so the base of the pyramid. This is where a lot of tanks are at. Not like a lot of tanks. Like uh, almost every tank I seem to run into in the uh, dungeon group finder or well, random instances. Um, and I also talk to uh, some of these tanks in my guilds or in my trade guilds or social guilds in the game and they have this idea that tanks in ESO are only meant to hold aggro and not die. Uh, this is like, sure that is a basic, the basic functions of a tank, but it's not everything. This is, anyone can do this, like, I'm not trying to be toxic or whatever, but anyone can do this. Um, and then I, like I said to uh, Hand of the God, Hand of God, and uh, Malicious earlier at the beginning of the of tonight. I want to make sure you guys eventually end up uh, about here. Like you want to not just hold aggro and not die. You also want to consider which sets you want to bring for your group. You want to also maximize your buffs and debuffs for your group. The yeah, dude, the, right now I'm, right. I'm between. The I'm right in the middle. I'm at the third. I'm, I'm right in the third line between three and four from top down. Okay. I mean, from the sounds of it, I think you'll get here pretty fast. Um, but yeah, that this is the pyramid and the do everything part. That's like that's whatever. That's like the end. That's the end result. And the very tippy top. I hate. It's like perfection, which I don't think anyone will get to. Um, our, I think a lot. Some people have gotten close to it, but I don't think anyone can be too perfect. All right, but th yeah, that's it. Um, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you well, so thank much. You. If you, do you guys have any other questions or whatever, you can feel free to ask. 
I think I'm good for now. I think I need to take the information I've gotten and I need to start trying to apply it before you uh, start teaching us some trials. Okay, so uh, before you guys go, I want to make sure who asked for what. Uh, who asked for axes or AA Hardman? Was that? Well, I think we all. All, all everyone? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've got I've got axes okay, but that hard mode definitely. Okay. Adding okay. a storm atros, but yeah, I, I can hold axes and I can hold the mage. That's the problem, but uh, adding the storm atros into it is definitely. Okay. Uh, and who asked for off tanking sunswire? I asked for off tanking sunswire, Russell. Yeah, I'd like that too. And who asked for VCR plus here? Was that Russell as well? Or yeah, Russell VCR plus anything, but VCR in general, just knowing how to handle each of them, and then okay, yeah, plus zero first. Let me let, let me get one of those under my belt before I start worrying about the plus ones and plus twos. Okay, and uh, V Maw. V Maw was also Russell. Yeah, and me too. I think Malicious just kind of wanted anything just to start. Uh, I'll think of it. Depths of Molotar was SSG, right? Yes. Alright. Alright. And I will let you guys know which one we're gonna do, or which ones, depending on the time. We're gonna do this... What was it? Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. yeah. I'll let you know the times as well. And you guys can either just you don't even have to show up, but if you show up, I'll talk to you while I'm doing it in Discord, or I can or I can just post later to you too. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, feel free to PM me or put it in Discord. There's also channels in this Discord. And there's a tanks channel if you need a general advice from anyone. But uh, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Thanks again, Nefes. No problem. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys. <laughs> no. All right. I was I was extremely engaged. So. Okay, perfect. And let's get started. This Saturday will be the start, I guess. I just want everyone to get thank on the same again. page. Okay. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you.